Welcome back today in episode number six, Hunting Around the World. This time we go back to the southern part of Africa and we are hunting in South Africa. South Africa for me is basically my second home. So the last years I've been every year like one to four times in South Africa. I have a lot of friends there and hunting in all the different provinces which you can find in South Africa. What you can see here is a very, very small selection of planes game which you can hunt in South Africa. South Africa is really the biggest uh, number of, of animals which you can hunt in, in one specific place. So you really get uh, nearly all the, the different antelope species what you can hunt in the southern part of Africa. And they have also a lot of special antelopes. So here you see the standard, but you can also go like for the tiny 10, which are the 10 smallest antelopes of Africa. And except the dictate, dig, you can find all of them in the different places of South Africa including like Stinba, Clip Springer, uh, Oribe, Sunni, Red and Blue Diker, and, and many, many more. When we now look at the, the animals you can see here, so on the upper left side, you have the kudu, or also called the red stag of Africa, because this is really the first thing most of the people are really going for. On the upper right side, you see the Nyala. Nyala is a special antelope which comes in the Zululand or East Cape, so they really love the bushes and the, and the green places. But in the meantime, you can also hunt them in other places where they have been introduced. But the bottom right corner shows you the <coughs> sable antelope, which is a very, very famous and very, very uh, nice antelope, uh, which you can, can really hunt here. On the bottom right corner, you see the, the water bugs as well as the, the zebras, which you can also hunt in South Africa. And the middle, the most famous animal for all Spanish and German hunters, the warthogs, which are also existing in South Africa with especially exceptional trophies in, um, in Limpopo. So within South Africa, the accommodation is mainly in uh, lodges. Most of them are like four or five star lodges, which are either in the hunting area or very, very close to the hunting area. You see here some examples from Port Elizabeth in East Cape, Northwest, which is the far north of, um, of South Africa. Example from Fireplace in Limpopo, or here also an area in the Free State. So all of them are quite very high standard, what we can then use for hunting. Here's also an example of uh, how the rooms looks inside. So this room uh, is like more a flat. You have uh, everything. You could even have a kitchen there. So you could also do like self-catering but normally all the hunting is with uh, full boarded accommodation. So then let's look how the hunting looks uh, like in South Africa. First of all, we normally start with a pickup truck. So what you see here is a typical South African or Namibian uh, or even a Zimbabwean hunting vehicle. You have a, a pickup with, um, uh, where you have some seats even in the back, but these seats are not to shoot from there, but it's more to watch. And then when you see the animals, then you really stop there and, um, and approach them to, to shoot. So then we have some impressions from the different, different areas of South Africa. So Africa is so many provinces that it's really like, you can come there five times and you've seen five different, completely different landscapes. What you see here is an example from the East Cape. East Cape is uh, in the south east part of uh, South Africa. And what you can see here, there's quite some green bushes, but also some, some open fields. And in the background, you can see the Indic Ocean. I mean, this is really amazing hunting here with having the, the ocean in, in the back. And also when you do your like pictures with the trophies, this gives really, really nice pictures also with the scenery. <coughs> Another example, what we see here is from the Free State. Free State is more in the middle of South Africa. And normally it's very, very flat. So what you see here is really an exception for the free state. So this is close to Bloemfontein. Here you have really open areas, but you also have a lot of mountains and hills in between. So, and these different area or uh, different kind of landscape in one area allows us really to hunt here more than 30 different species, which is uh, one of the places where you really can hunt most of the species really in a very short uh, distance. <clears throat> so in the open areas, for example, you can get springbok, plesbok, uh, wildebeest. Then you have the mountains area where you can also get clip springer, you have kudus and, and many, many more. So the next one, this is now an area in Zululand. Uh, so um, 
KwaZulu Natal. And uh, you see here, it's more open space, more grassland, but they also have a lot of bushes in between and a lot of green, green bushes. This is the area where you mainly um, <clears throat> see the Nyala. You see bush bog, you also have reed bog, like common reed bog, mountain reed bog, and uh, of course, also the normal antelopes like Impala, Kudu, which you see nearly everywhere in, in South Africa. Yeah, and then how is the approach? So the main approach is, first of all, normally you're driving into the area, and then depending on what animal you want to hunt, you are then either sitting or you're stalking. And what you see here is basically the typical hunting style we did like in um, East Cape. You go into the area, you go up the hill, you class up the, the different um, uh, plain, plains areas to see is there the animal you want, like a warthog, impala, or whatever you're looking for. If you then see here in the area <coughs> or in the flatland your, your, uh, your game you want to go for, then you make a plan how you can get as close as possible to the game to then uh, do your shot. For the shot, you also see here what the pH has. It's uh, the shooting stick. So normally you have a bipod or a tripod, which you then really use um, mainly as the, yeah, I would say the main shooting uh, opportunity in uh, Africa. So most of the stuff is really shot from the shooting stick. The other opportunity beside stalking the animals is waiting on the water hole. So there are a lot of natural water holes, but also a lot of uh, artificial ones. So like dams, which have been uh, man-made or like here, uh, water holes where you have also a pump to really pump the water so that you make sure that the animals and it's like the game plus also the, the cattle, which are on many of these farms, always have uh, drinking water. The advantage of sitting on a water hole is first of all, there's a good chance of getting warthogs because warthogs are mainly shot on the water holes. And of course, uh, also for the other antelopes, you can select much better and you have a yeah, steady shooting position so that you just can wait for them. And also, if you're not really that physical fit, this is easy hunting because you're just sitting there and waiting. So here are then some examples of trophies like a nice warthog or also some antelopes like waterbuck. Um, here you have an impala, a bushbuck from Limpopo or then one of these uh, very good uh, sables, what we can shoot. Beside Plains game, also South Africa offers us quite a bunch of big game that we can hunt here. So we can hunt lion, elephant, buffalo. We can also hunt um, hippo, crocodile, even rhinos, uh, which is the only place in the whole world where we can also hunt for rhinos. The hunting on the, the big game is um, different to Plains game. So for, um, uh, leopard, for example, or lions. Uh, for, for leopards, you can use the bait. The same is true for the crocodiles. So you can bait them on, on the shore. So to wait for them to come out of the water, or you can uh, stalk them to see if they're laying on the sandbank and then you can, can shoot them. Or if you are quite good shooter, you can also shoot them in the water, but then you really need to hit the brain and then you can, can get them. Same is true for the hippo. Hippo is normally shot either outside or inside the water, but always or as much as possible brain shot so that they really go down immediately. So let's now have a look at a buffalo hunt. Buffalo hunts in uh, South Africa, we are doing the same way as in Zimbabwe. That means we find a fresh track in the morning, we stalk after the track until we reach the buffaloes and then we decide if it's the right one or not. And here you can see an example of a buffalo track next to a 375 Holland and Holland, which is a minimum caliber what you're allowed to shoot uh, for the big game. If this is a track and the pH says, yes, this is a proper bull, we want to go for it, then we just follow this track until we reach the, the buffaloes. If you find it very early in the morning and it's fresh, then you can have it in a few hours or even faster. If it's a little bit older track and the buffaloes are really on the run, then it can take the whole day to really reach the buffaloes. And as you can see here, before in the sand, um, you can see it quite easy, the, the, the track, but here then it gets more and more difficult with the leaves on the ground. And then especially if it goes left or right into the thick bush, then to follow the tracks uh, is very hard for someone who is not used to it. And that's why we have our PHs and trackers who can really follow these tracks, even in the thick bush, even on stones, to really bring us to the buffaloes. If you're then lucky and we can reach the buffalo herd, 
then it's important to really look at the wind and your cover. And here we were lucky, wind is coming directly from the front, so the buffaloes do not see us at all or smell us at all. And with this, we can really get close to them and uh, then try to figure out which of the buffalo is the right one for us to shoot. And then you need to try to get a shooting position. In this case, we couldn't shoot because they are always standing behind each other. So there's no free, free side to shoot them. But we were following them. And luckily, there was a, a small pass where they had to pass. And they were passing one by one. So that whenever the, the buffalo that we were targeting for jumped over the, the, on the street, we were able to bring the shoot from the shooting stick so that we could get our trophy. Yeah, and this is now an example of a trophy, what you can shoot here. And uh, this is now a, a good bull with which we have shot <coughs> in this area. And now everything of this bull in the end is used. So that means trophy goes to the hunter, meat and so on, goes to the local community, goes to the, uh, the lodges, so that really the whole body is, is used. Good. Here, this was now an impression of the hunting, what you can do in South Africa. But South Africa offers many, many more things than just hunting. What you can see here is a lot of tourism uh, options. You can go to Cape Town with a, a table mountain. You have some coasts where you can go swimming and so on. You have the garden route. You have the Kruger National Park and many, many other national parks and, and options. What you can really do in South Africa to combine your hunting with a normal uh, vacation. With this, um, yeah, thank you very much. It was a really pleasure for me to show you my second home which is South Africa in the meantime, as I'm visiting it so many times. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do and see you then for the next episode for the next country.